If you recently got a brand new phone and don't know what to do with your old one, then go to your old cell phone drawer, grab one, be it Android or iPhone, and let's convert it into a home kit security camera. Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple home kit ecosystem. And I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't be shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, I'm pretty sure that every one of us has at least one old smartphone in the drawer. One of the most useful ways is to repurpose that old piece of tech is to convert it into a home security camera. It's cost effective, you reduce e-waste, plus it keeps an eye on your home. So in this video, I will show you together with Homebridge, how easy it is to convert that same old phone into a HomeKit security camera enable HomeKit secure video all by using a single plugin. Now for the old smartphones, be it Android or iPhone, the key here is to take advantage of the camera hardware that is in it, use a free app to convert it into a security camera, and then broadcast the video into Apple HomeKit all by using a Homebridge plugin, which I will show you in this video. Now the icing on the cake is to apply Apple's HomeKit security video features to enable streaming and recording, plus at the same time get notified on your Apple TV as well as other devices as well. So for this tutorial, we will need at least an iPhone or an Android that's working and can be turned on. And to enable the integration into Apple HomeKit, we will be using Homebridge. Plus I have videos on how to install it on multiple platforms and I have left links in the description. So let's go ahead and put this forgotten piece of tech to good use. Now these are some of the things you need to know before setting up these phones as cameras. Number one, these devices, they need to be powered on 24 seven using the uh, supplied power bricks or you can even use a smart plug to automate the charging process. Number two, do not keep it in warm or direct sunlight areas because the batteries will get warm and they will turn off on their own or it could also be a fire hazard. Number three, you are taking advantage of the camera hardware that's in these phones. You are not going to be getting the camera features that came along with that phone's software. So you wanna take note of that. Four, you need to have one of the iCloud storages to add additional cameras. So if you're using a 50 GB plan, you can only add one camera, 200 allows you five. And if you have two terabytes, you can add unlimited number of cameras, which allows you to store and analyze security camera recordings for 10 days and it does not go against your iCloud storage plan. Now, with that being said, let's go into the phone setups. Now, if you're using an iPhone, you want to go ahead and download the app called IP Webcam. To do that, all you have to do is open up the Google Play Store. You want to look for IP Webcam and I've already gone ahead and downloaded. Now, just to let you know, I'm using an old Samsung S8 that a friend of mine borrowed uh, to me to use for this video. So it's pretty damaged, but I was able to use it for two weeks actually. So it does work, it turns on and the battery is functioning well. So let's go ahead and open up the IP webcam. Now, some of the things you need to tweak before you set up the app and convert it into a security camera. So first we want to do is go to local broadcasting and you want to make sure that the HTTP and RTSP port is 8080. Now just in case 8080 is used in your DIY smart home, you can add in and update this value to any other port that you desire. So I've left it as 8080. You want to go back, but before we go back, you want to make sure this is not a public camera. So please make sure you disable that. You want to go back. You want to scroll all the way down and you want to tap on video preferences and you want to make sure the main camera is primary, secondary and the video resolution 1920 into 1080p. And that's all you have to do in this section. Let's go back. You want to go to power management and you want to scroll all the way down. You want to enable shallow sleep. This will turn off the screen and improves web server performance and it also uses less battery and CPU power. And you also want to turn on disable notification and stream on device boot. So just in case there's a power recycle, the app starts automatically. You want to go back 
and you want to go and enable motion and sound detection you want to enable at least the motion detection so with this way it uh, works with the home kit security camera algorithms as well and you also want to enable sound detection that's about it you want to go back then you want to go to effects and then you just want to update the text overlay so in this case in the overlay format i've left the date and time so it's the small x and the capital x that's about it tap ok you want to go back and you want to scroll all the way down and that's all you have to do with this free app configuration there is a paid app we're not going to be using that but with this free app it's more than enough to convert it into a security camera under optional permissions you want to allow streaming in background which is on by default and then you want to go ahead and all you have to do now is tap on start server so now you're going to be seeing it's broadcasting video so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and capture the http information that's the first one and if you tap on more tap on rtsp you'll see that it also provides you a link to the rtsp so what i have done is i've already gone ahead and accessed my paste bin these are the rtsp links that i've already captured so i'm using this rtsp link and for the snapshots i'm using the http link what I want to reiterate over here is you have to be patient when you're configuring these cameras because every camera model is different. So you want to test it in the VLC player, which we will do now. So these are the two links you need when you're using an Android phone, an RTSP link, which is right here. And then you're going to get the HTTP link, which is on the homepage. Once that is done, all you have to do now is go to actions and then tap on run in background and tap on. Okay, I get it. With that being said, we can now close this, turn off the screen, and I'm just going to keep it here. And then I'm going to open up VLC player. I'm just going to copy this link, RTSP link. Go back to VLC, file, open network, paste the link, and click on open. Let's try again. I'm just going to backslash that additional space, tap on open. There's a link. So it just takes time because I'm in a room and the room is closed, so the Wi-Fi connectivity is a little bit poor but that's the confirmation the link is working. Now, one of the perks of using an Android phone is you can access the camera feed using a web page. So we will go back to this link, just copy the HTTP link and paste it here and hit enter. So now we have a web page interface for the Android app that we installed on that phone. All I have to do is click on browser, click on wave, and that's simple. Now you have a web interface for the Android phone. So it allows you to position it and uh, align wherever you want to monitor certain sections in your home. And you can also update some of the settings here. It's that simple. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this camera work in the background. And now let's go and do the same setup for a iPhone. Now, if you're using an iPhone, let's go ahead and open up the app store. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and download an app called Live Reporter, Live Camera. Now there are two versions to this app. One is free and one is paid. What we're going to do is you want to use the free one because it's more than enough. If you want, you can explore the paid version as well. Let's go ahead and click on open. Now the iPhone version is a lot more straightforward, lesser configuration. The only drawback is you can't run in background. So you have to dim the screen and it will run in background, unlike like the Android app. Unfortunately, the IP webcam app is not available in the app store. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go tap on the configuration tool. You wanna to make sure the codec is H.264. That's how the Apple understands the video feeds. You wanna make sure the camera setup resolution is 1920 into 1080p, frame rate is 30 FPS, encode quality is middle, and the keyframe is one second. Audio, you want to enable audio. Network, you can, no changes, and leave the current time and GPS reverse geocoding as is. So these are the uh, settings you need to do. We return to top. And what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna take a note on the IP address. So it starts with, uh, it ends with 100. So I'm just going to go now and copy this link and I'm going to open up VLC player, file, open network. I'm going to paste. That's about it. I've got the RTSP set up and we've converted this iPhone into a security camera. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce this and keep this running in the background. Now with the cameras, 
set up and all converted into security cameras. Now's the time we have to broadcast that video into Apple HomeKit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna access our HomeBridge interface. Now, one of the things I want to mention over here is that these cameras, depending on where they're positioned and the network interface needs to be good with your Wi-Fi network. So you always wanna make sure where you position these cameras. Now, the plugin we're going to go ahead and download is Camera UI. So you wanna look for Camera UI and you wanna go ahead and install this plugin. Now, I've done this a complete detailed tutorial on how to use the Camera UI. I left a link in the description, you can go and access that. But here what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in these two cameras. So you wanna to go to settings and I've already added these cameras and I wanna show you how they are set up. So you wanna to go to config and you want to go to cameras. And what I've done is I've already gone and done this configuration and I have one called Android iPhone and I've got iPhone. So basically within the Android phone, I've used it as unbridged camera. Always recommended when you add cameras in Homebridge as unbridged. I've enabled HomeKit secured video, enabled pre-buffering, branding, you can put whatever you like to. And under stream configuration, I'm going to paste that RTSP link that starts with I. I'm going to paste the same information for substream. For still image source, I'm going to be using that HTTP link that I'd mentioned earlier. Maximum concurrent streams is two, width and height is one, 1,218 to 720, frame rates, default. You want to enable audio. And you want to apply the same configuration to HomeKit Secure Video. Same configuration, audio codec is libftk and video codec is copy. And also another thing in the advanced stream configuration, there's nothing you need to change right here. And then from there, you want to go ahead and enable the motion sensors. So when you uh, go into Apple HomeKit, that sensors there, so you can add in ad advanced automations, turn on lights or any device. And I did the same configuration for the iPhone as well. So in this case, unbridged, HomeKit secure video, pre-buffering and branding. Stream configuration is just the RTSP link, no more, no less. Concurrent stream is two, so two devices can access the same camera. Maximum width and height is 1280 into 720p. Enable audio. Same thing with the HomeKit secure video configuration. You want to start the RTSP link with dash I, that's the input value. Maximum width and height. And that's about it. You want to enable audio and you want to enable the motion sensors. Once that is done, all you have to do is click save and you want to restart the service. Go to status. And then once everything is running perfectly, you'll see under the logs that the configuration has been set up as unbridged. As for the both the phones, you also get the QR codes and you always want to give it a couple of minutes for camera UI to start. With that being said, all you have to do then is go into your Apple uh, device, open up the Apple Home app, tap on plus add accessory, more options, and you will see both these phones appearing to be added into Apple Home app. Go ahead and add them, and then you wanna make sure you want to allow stream and record, and adjust whatever parameters you want for HomeKit secure video. It's that simple. Now, from here, I just wanted to show you that I've been playing around with these two cameras over the last two weeks, but before we do that, let me go ahead and open up the Apple Home app, and open up one camera. You always wanna be patient for it to broadcast. There it is. It also has been recording over the last couple of days. That's the iPhone and this is the Android phone. So we know we've got the cameras now in the Apple Home app. So now I just wanted to show you quickly on my phone, how does it all look? So I open up the Apple Home app. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the Android phone. And from here, I just wanna show you that I can see all of the timeline and I've been recording over the last two weeks, all of the footage that I have here. So I can go into any day and right now, I was using the camera as an outdoor cam, using it in my room, and then I was also using it in the living room. So it's pretty cool. And that's how these cameras have been set up. And I've moved them around uh, between different locations around my home. Just like that, you can convert these phones into HomeKit security cameras using free apps, convert it into security camera, using a plugin to broadcast into Apple HomeKit, and most importantly, enabling the HomeKit secure video features and giving a new lease of life to this old piece of tech. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers and happy automation.